Like many other uh, customer-facing businesses, Dunkin' Brands has seen its share of, uh, of the reaction to the global pandemic. One of the biggest donut chains in the world, coffee and donut chains, in July it said it will close 8% of its U.S. locations. It was a company that was founded and built by the Rosenberg family, and Robert Rosenberg was its CEO for 35 years. He's got a new book called Around the Corner to Around the World, in it, lessons for uh, of leadership and growth for others building businesses. And of course, Robert Rosenberg joins us now. Uh, I feel like I have to start, uh, Robert, with, you know, you wrote this book. Presumably you began writing this book because they're not written overnight uh, before a global pandemic hit. How do you think the lessons and what you learned growing this business uh, should be applied now in the midst of this crisis? Well, I didn't face anything quite as difficult as a, as a worldwide pandemic. But during the 35 years, we probably faced four or so existential crises, any one of which could have spelled the end of the business. And, and I did come away from those experiences with kind of three lessons that I pass along. The, the first is pre-preparation. I served on the boards of Domino, Sonic, and Dunkin' Donuts. Those are food service companies. And once a year, we would caucus uh, for a full day easily, maybe longer, uh, looking at um, uh, what could befall the company? It's called risk assessment. So basically, we take a look at what could befall us, a food um, problem in terms of hurting a customer with some some food that might endanger their health, of course, was high in our list of things that we were concerned about, customers having their information hacked. There were a number of risks that we had to face. We take a look at mm -hmm. who had done it well, who had done it poorly, what kind of team we would form in order to be able to, to deal with the crisis uh, who had done it before, what were the good things they learned from it, what were the bad. So pre-preparation is essential. The second thing would be to as assign a team, hopefully beforehand, of experts who could deal with the crisis and lead the rest of the organization to deal with the day-to-day -day running of the business. Not everybody can be involved in the pandemic. Businesses have to run day in and day out. The last thing I would pass along would be communication. Uh, you got, it's a time for incredible authenticity, transparency, You've got to be able to inform the organization, all your constituents, about what's going on, how you're handling it. People's lives are at stake. They're concerned. They may not be involved in solving the crisis or dealing with the crisis, but they are going to be involved with the aftermath of it and what the end, end result's going to be. So you've got to take care of them with a lot of care, a lot of sensitivity. So those would be the three things that I learned that I pass along. You know, one of the things that um, is notable about chains like Dunkin', and for Canadians, the familiar name would be Tim Hortons, uh, is how uh, how loyal your customers are to you. They go to that that store. Uh, it doesn't feel as though they really shop around once they've decided they're a Dunkin' Donuts person or a Tim Hortons d d person. How difficult does that make it to grow your base? Uh, in other words, and I'm, I, that rivalry, I guess, where Tim's has come into your market or you've come into theirs, uh, how hard is it to kind of persuade somebody to cross the street? Hard. Uh, coffee is a habitual product. But as you uh, expand the offering into new offerings, it becomes a little bit easier. So if you now look at a lot of the offerings, they're not only hot beverages, not only coffee, but it's also some nitro flesh beverages, nitro-infused beverages, cold uh, iced coffees, um, uh, uh, lattes, and other kinds of beverages. As that goes, that gives you a wider range of customers to satisfy and to thrill. But it is it is a, a, a business that's based on a lot of customer loyalty, thank God, <laughs> because that's what drove our business for years. And Tim's is a terrific competitor in, in Canada, and I think we're an able competitor for them in many other markets around the world, particularly in the United States. You grew this business, um, started by uh, by your father, but grew it from, as I understand it, 100 stores to 6,500 into a multi-billion dollar empire. Uh, there are obviously huge lessons learned along the way, but is there a difference between being in growth mode uh, and then managing a business that, uh, it, it certainly in some markets, has hit its saturation point or close to it? Yeah, well, luckily we're still growing in most markets, and yeah, there is, there is a difference, but fundamentally, uh, we built the business focusing on three activities, really crisp planning, uh, real commitment to extraordinary products. Uh, our desire, our purpose in life really was to, to satisfy the customer's needs for a pick-me-up to start the day and throughout the day with snacks and, and products that, that really thrill them. And so making new offers all the time in that regard are, are essential. And people, basically we built the business with extraordinary people, both franchise owners as well as staff. Uh, we were together as a management team for over 20 years. 
And that was one of the big advantages in building our business. So we were real clear about what we wanted to be and what our purpose was. And also we were fortunate to have wonderful people to help execute on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's true in mature markets as well as emerging ones. You know, when I look at Duncan Brand's stock, uh, you know, it's more than recovered from the, the shock of the pandemic. What do you think helped the, the stores get through this period, uh, dealing with all of the challenges that others have dealt with, including, you know, partial or complete shutdowns, uh, you know, restrictions on how customers can behave, et cetera? Convenience has always been one of the hallmarks of why people seek out and frequent and are loyal to, to um, the quick service restaurant brands. And Tim's and Duncan are both quick service brands. And I think uh, those companies that were able to pivot early uh, to drive through windows, to uh, home delivery, to online ordering, to mobile ordering, those people that put convenience sort of at the top of the list, made the investments early, uh, like Duncan did, uh, were able to be able to, to pivot during the time of the pandemic and still continue to satisfy their customers. But unfortunately, those, those other operations, those other businesses that weren't able to pivot quick enough or didn't invest early enough in those same kind of delivery aspects of serving people what they want, when they want it, all through all different platforms, unfortunately, are going to be uh, less successful. And there's going to be some, some painful aftermath when the dust clears from this pandemic. But I think the larger chains that did that are going to not only survive, in my view, they are going to thrive in the future. We do have, I mean, there's some kind of renewed uncertainty. We got to look at sort of jobless claims today that just a reminder that the path of the pandemic will really determine how consumers are doing. We have yet to see a new stimulus package in America. Your customer base uh, probably feeling a little uncertain these days. Are you confident that everything that's worked so far will continue to work, even though we don't know what's going to happen with COVID-19? The future is uncertain, and, and hopefully, and I pray that that we will be working our way out of this in a matter of months, not years. But there will be pain and there will be adjustments. Consumers are adapting. Uh, they are eating more at home. Uh, they are relying on a uh, pickup, curbside, a whole host of ways. And I think that will last after the pandemic. The consumer is responding uh, in a number of different ways. In many respects, a lot of what we see it's just acceleration of trends that were already underway before the pandemic. The pandemic has accelerated them. So the internet and the ability to online order, custom order, custom pay, loyalty programs, all of the things that they've come to rely upon have all been telescoped as a result of the pandemic. And I think that, as I said before, those that are able to, to, to adapt to it, I think will continue to thrill their customers, continue to keep a high proportion of their customers. Unfortunately, there's gonna be some fallout right. among those that can't.